What's up people? This is DET Aquarium and today I want to bring you a two-part series on how to keep and breed Taiwan bee shrimp. Now I'm really excited to bring this series to you. I have a lot of tips and tricks and just some basic bits of knowledge to really set you onto the right path. Now Taiwan bees in our shrimp community are really the pinnacle shrimp um, once you get through Neocaridina and maybe some crystal red shrimp, crystal black shrimp, but Taiwan bees are really at the top. But a lot of people think they're too hard or you have to do too much or you have to be so finicky with your water parameters. But the truth is, over the years, they've just gotten easier and easier and easier to keep. So I want to share with you what has worked for me in my experience. I hope you gained something from the series. So let's go ahead and get into it. So before we get going too far into keeping and breeding these shrimp, we want to know actually what they are. They're a Caridina shrimp species, just like crystal red or crystal black shrimp, meaning that they will interbreed with other Caridinas. They're actually a mutation um, from crystal red or crystal black shrimp. Now, that just means that along the way there was a funky color that popped up in a crystal red or crystal black colony, and somebody selectively bred that trait to continue that coloration or that pattern. And that's where we come along to this group of Taiwan bee shrimp that include patterns like the panda or black king kong or the blue bolt or red wine and there's a couple other variations that are lumped into this category again you need to know that there are caridina shrimp species that were a mutation off of a crystal red or crystal black shrimp this part of the series i really want to focus on three main points with you one being setup planting and filling and lastly, adding shrimp to your Taiwan bee tank. Now, I don't want to focus on the finite details of keeping and breeding shrimp in general. I want to focus primarily on Taiwan bees and how I can help you succeed in keeping them. So the first part of setup, I'm not going to get into every piece of hardware. I'm just going to focus on what's most important to Taiwan bees. So in setup, the first item would be your substrate. Substrate is absolutely crucial when keeping these shrimp. You need an active substrate, meaning it's going to buffer your pH to a softer, more acidic water. And I keep my shrimp around 6.2, 6.4, give or take, and they absolutely thrive and do well in this uh, pH range. Now, we want to keep it stable, of course, and that's why you want to make sure or ensure that the active substrate you're, you're getting actually lasts uh, in excess of a couple months. Most of the substrates you're not going to have to worry they last a year or in excess of a year and that's fantastic. So outside of substrate when it comes to setup they're not going to be too picky about the size of your aquarium or your lighting. I definitely uh, think when it comes to filtration you should go with a canister filter is my all-time favorite or a sponge or HMF but what, whatever you choose if you have an intake, just be sure you cover it with some sort of filter guard so you don't lose any of your shrimp wits in the actual filter itself. Next, I want to talk to you about planting and filling your Taiwan bee shrimp tank. Now, I always tell hobbyists to keep it simple. And what I mean by that when it comes to plants is get something low maintenance that doesn't take a lot of work or a lot of upkeep to maintain it. Now, when I pick a plant for my Taiwan bee shrimp tanks, I always pick a moss. And moss, uh, is fantastic. It houses microorganisms, beneficial bacteria, and at the same time is a nice hiding place for any shrimplets if they feel threatened at all. Outside of moss, you could always go with Bousse or Bouquet Philandra, like I have here, Anubias, just in general something slow growing that doesn't require a lot of upkeep. Now on to filling up your aquarium, but what type of water should you use? Well, I absolutely recommend using RODI water, and it's probably one of the most important pieces of advice I can give you aside from using an active substrate. Now, RODI water is almost the purest form of water that you can use. You don't have to worry about any imbalances as it comes to minerals or too high or too low of a pH or if there's chlorines or chloramines. It's pure, and you get to remineralize it to the exact water parameters that you want for your Taiwan B shrimp. And that's exactly what we want. A nice easy way to start to ensure that what we need for our shrimp are in the water. But I've used a few remineralizers in the past. Here are a few that I use currently or have used in the past. Uh, 
one of the most famous dry forms of remineralizer is this bee shrimp mineral GH plus. If we take the lid off, you can see it's almost like a salt. But as our hobby has progressed and more and more manufacturers have created products, we've been going to a more liquid form of remineralizer just because it's easier to use and when it hits the RODI water it's almost instantly that you can test the water parameters and check what your TDS is or your GH or KH but in general I absolutely recommend RODI water it's almost imperative when keeping your Taiwan bee shrimp the last part I want to talk to you about today is adding Taiwan bee shrimp to your aquarium but even prior to that you want to make sure that you've cycled your aquarium you spent the time, the four to six weeks needed to build up that beneficial bacteria to break down your ammonia to nitrite to nitrates. Now that's absolutely crucial that you don't rush this process. Uh, I always tell people to be patient as well. And whenever you set up your aquarium, you can't expect to add your shrimp in the next day or two. It's just not possible or probable. You want to take the time, uh, make sure your beneficial bacteria is built up and after those four to six weeks, or in some people's cases, maybe a little bit sooner, but you can add your Taiwan bee shrimp with confidence. But when adding your Taiwan bee shrimp, you want to make sure that you acclimate them to your water parameters. Because if you think about it, the person that's housing or keeping your Taiwan bees, they're probably going to have a different water parameter or different setup than what they're, what they're going to be used to. And even in the shipping phase, they're going to be stressed out and, uh, and whenever you get them, you need to make sure that you take the time to acclimate them. A lot of people do this already, but I, de I definitely want to touch base about the drip acclimation method. It's very simple. I just have this container here that you can use. You can really use a bowl. At times, I use that as well. But um, you get your bowl, or in my case, this container. You get your easy-to-use drip line. Some people use something a little more fancy but I just use a, a drip line with a knot in it. The knot is to regulate the amount of uh, water flow so it's not coming in too quickly. You put one side into the aquarium, you put the other side into your container and you slowly let it drip. I would say um, a drop or two a second would be sufficient enough. A little slower, a little faster wouldn't hurt anything. But you want to take, uh, in my case I usually take two hours sometimes longer depending how long shipment was but let them sit for two hours or so let it drip into the water uh, that they came in make sure that the acclimating temperature as well as the water chemistry to to your aquarium and and just make sure you be patient take your time through this process it's absolutely a joy to keep these shrimp and I want to make sure that we keep them successfully together that's all for this first part on how to keep and breed Taiwan bee shrimp I hope you gained some knowledge or just learned some do's and don'ts on Taiwan bee shrimp. As always, I, I absolutely appreciate your support. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. You guys have a great week and look forward to the second part on how to keep and breed Taiwan bee shrimp.